This is a video about finding the matrix of a linear transformation. This is a very useful concept in linear algebra since it applies to all linear transformations and can make finding their properties very straightforward, as simple as reducing to the echelon form. We will now explore how to find such a matrix. First, it is useful to define exactly what a linear transformation is. So a transformation T in general from Rn to Rm is a rule that assigns each vector x in Rn a vector T of x in Rm. Some useful terms are shown here. Rn is the domain of T. Rm is the codomain of T. For every x in Rn, the vector T of x in Rm is called the image of x and the set of all images t of x is called the range of t. So all of these terms apply to any general transformation t from Rn to Rm, but we're interested in specifically linear transformations t. So we can say that t is linear if t of u plus v is equal to the transformation of u plus the transformation of v for all u and v in the domain of t. Also, t of c times u is equal to c times t of u for all scalars c and u in the domain of t. This leads to a generalization It shows that T of C1 V1 plus C2 V2 and so on up until CP VP is equal to the linear combination of the transformations on the individual vectors scaled by the same weights. So having this background, let's now look a little bit further we can say that if T is linear, we can find a matrix A such that T of X, the transformation of X, can be written as a matrix times X. So how do we find such a matrix A for a given transformation T, for a linear transformation T? Well, we can write X as our vector of values, so each value in x is denoted by xi going from 1 to n, which is the same thing as the identity matrix times x, since the identity matrix times any vector is the vector itself, and we can write this out. The identity matrix is going to be a 1 and zeros, then 0, 1, 0, and so on, and all the way down to zeros and a 1 for an n by n identity matrix. And that's getting multiplied by our vector x. And this can be written as, if we look at the columns of the identity matrix as being denoted by e1, e2, and so on up until en, We can write this as a linear combination of the columns of the identity matrix as x1, e1, plus x2, e2, all the way up to xn, en. So now we can see what the transformation t is going to do to this, since we want to find t of x, we're going to write this as acting upon this linear combination. And using what we just saw above right here, we can rewrite it in terms of the expression on the right. So this will be, and this is just a linear combination of the transformation of the columns of the identity matrix scaled by the values in the x vector. And so this can be rewritten as a matrix times the vector x, where the columns of the matrix are the transformations of the columns of the identity matrix 
And that's exactly what we were looking for. This forms the matrix A, the transformation matrix A. So let's see how to apply this to some examples. Suppose we want to find a transformation matrix A to reflect points over the x2 axis. So we have to see what this is going to do to the columns of the identity matrix in R2. So let's take a look at that. The columns of the identity matrix are going to be here and here. So this is 1, 0, or as we called it, E1, and this is 0, 1, or E2. And we're going to see what's going to happen as a result of this transformation. So we know that when we're reflecting over the x2 axis, E1 is going to end up facing the other way. So it's going to be negative 1, 0. So this is T of E1. And E2 is going to remain the same since it's already on the x2 axis. So that's still going to be 0, 1. So T of E2 is equal to just 0, 1. So let's summarize this. We have that t of e1 is equal to negative 1, 0. t of e2 is equal to 0, 1. And so overall, using what we just found above, we see that the matrix A of this transformation is equal to negative 1, 0, 0, 1. So let's check this. Suppose we have a point in the x1, x2 plane, let's call it x, and it is at 2, 3. So we want to see what ax is going to be. Here's our a times x is going to equal negative 2, 3. So that means that our point is going to be, after a transformation, right here at negative 2, 3. And we can see that that is exactly what we wanted. It got reflected over the x2 axis. So that does exactly what we expect using the matrix of the transformation that we just found. So let's look at Another example. Suppose now that we want to reflect points through the origin. Let's see what this will look like on the columns of the identity matrix once again. So our columns of the identity matrix are again drawn in red here. We're going to have 1, 0, which is E1, and 0, 1, which is E2. The transformation is going to transform E1, so we're reflecting through the origin. It'll now be pointing in the opposite direction, and it's going to be negative 1, 0. So this is T of E1. And T of E2 is now going to be pointing down, so that's 0, negative 1. And that's T of E2. So again, to summarize, we have that t of e1 is equal to negative 1, 0. t of e2 is 0, negative 1. And so just as before, our transformation matrix is obtained by putting these together. And we get negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So once again, let's perform a check. Let's take our previous point x add 2, 3, and see what happens to it under this transformation. So ax is equal to negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, times our vector 2, 3. And we can see that this is equal to negative 2, negative 3. That point is right here. 
So this is negative 2, negative 3. And we can see that that is exactly a reflection through the origin. So even though we've just shown this method here for two dimensions and verified it, because that's the easiest thing to actually observe, this will work for any dimensional spaces in the same exact way. As long as you know what the transformation does to the columns of the identity matrix, you can find the complete transformation matrix. Overall, we have seen what defines a linear transformation and how to find its standard matrix A. This matrix can be used to find several useful properties of the transformation, as is explored in my other videos. I hope that you now have a better grasp of where the matrix of a transformation comes from and what it actually means.